Hey Coder, so in the last video, we set up Nginx to work as an API gateway so that we can forward requests to any kind of machine that we want to or any web server that we want to. And so right now we've got our quick application running and talking with Nginx. And we also have Nginx set up to route to our backend with the exception that we haven't built our backend. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's go and set up our Node Express backend. Now, you might be using Python as a backend or Rust. You could use any backend you want. I'm going to use Node and Express because I want to use this for authentication and JavaScript or TypeScript works very well with Superbase. So that's what we're going to go and do over here. Let's get into it. So I need to create a folder now. And logically, I'm going to call that backend. So in my application, I've got a front end, which is my quick, I've got my proxy, which is Nginx, and I've got my back end that we're about to go and build. So what I want to do down here, I'm going to create a new terminal and I'm going to CD into backend. And as follows, I'm going to go and install some things. Now, if you don't have yarn installed, feel free to use NPM. So you can use NPM if you don't want to use yarn. I prefer using yarn. I find it works better with some packages. It didn't work well when I tried it with quick when it came to building out the quick application. And that's just because quick is still very early. It's in beta, probably by now it works. So actually now for Express, rather than using NPM, I'm actually just going to use yarn. So here I'm going to go yarn init as follows. And then I'm just going to keep the name the same and the version as it is with no description, no entry point, no repository URL, no author, no anything. So I'm just going to hit enter for all of those. And up here on my back end, you can see I now have this package.json and that's great. The best way that I found to get a Node Express server working with TypeScript is to use TS node or TypeScript node. You'll see a lot of blogs, etc. talking about building your TypeScript into JavaScript files, etc. TS node works for me. So here we're going to go yarn add or if you're using npm npm install TS dash node as follows, right? So here we go. That's created our TS node. Excellent. I also want Axios. So I'm going to go yarn add Axios. And let me just think what else do I want? Probably I'm going to want Express because this is going to be an Express server. So here I'm going to say yarn uh, add Express and that should install uh, Express as follows over there. I also want cause. So I'm going to say yarn add cause. And you don't have to keep doing yarn add. You could just do this all in one go. But I like to think about things individually. What do I need? And probably I'll use this back in for Stripe as well. So I'm going to say yarn add Stripe. We might as well go and get Stripe installed now and Superbase too. So yarn add Superbase. Now actually, let me just check here the Superbase docs. So install Superbase node. So Superbase is yarn add Superbase as follows. Let's go and add in uh, Superbase too. So yarn add Superbase. Brilliant. All right, this is looking good so far. Let's keep going, see if we can get something set up. So here in backend, I'm going to create a file here and I'm going to call this server.ts because we're going to use TypeScript and we're going to build out our node server. So let's get rid of some of the mess up here. Let's just close everything else and just work in this one file. And so what we want to do is import express like such. And also here I'm going to say express with a capital E from express like that. And I also want to import body parser from body parser like such. And let's import cause from cause. So if you do want to set up cross origin resource sharing in a special way as well, you will need cause. And I also want to set up a cookie parser too. So actually, I think that's something I should install. But let's just add some of these in here. So yarn add body parser like follows and also yarn add cookie dash parser. So we'll add those in too. And let's keep going. So here let's import cookie parser from cookie parser. And let's also import dot env from dot env because we definitely are going to want to work with environment variables. So let's add that in too. And then up here, let's just go dot env dot config like such. Because you want to do that as early as possible within your project. And let's just format everything with our 
semicolons like follows. Now let's determine the root domain. So here I'm going to say determine root domain. And so here we'll say let root domain uh, be equal to and I want this to be if I've got it in development to be localhost. But if I'm in production, I want it to be the actual web domain. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a env file for environment variables. And within that file, I'm going to say here node underscore env is going to be equal to development like follows. And I want my root domain root underscore domain underscore dev. So this is going to be for development is going to be equal to HTTP and then colon forward slash forward slash local host and its port here. We're going to expose this on port 3005, right? So we want this to run on port 3005. And here I'm going to say my root underscore domain underscore production is going to be equal to HTTPS code raiders or whatever domain you're using dot com. And the reason for this is you don't really need your root domain like this in your project or your server TypeScript. You could have it figure out and pull the root domain for you. But I'm just like to be clear here what I'm setting is what domain. So if I'm testing and I'm putting something in staging, it's very easy to chop and change different domains that I'm working with. And it's fine. It's just for now that should work fine. And then also what you want to put here is your superbase uh, URL. So superbase underscore URL and what that is equal to and also your superbase underscore secret underscore key and what that is equal to. So just make sure you go and put those things in as well. So back to here, what we'll say is that process dot env because this is what dot env does for us. It allows us to access our environment variables. So we'll say our node environment if it's equal to development. Then what I want you to do is give us your is go process dot env and that's going to be dot root domain and that will be underscore dev like follows else it is going to be same thing except it's not going to be dev it's going to be our production brilliant and let's go and format that that looks nice and let's go here const app and this is going to be an express type which we pulled in up here and that's going to be equal to express. And here is our express application here. Our port, so that's going to be const port is going to be equal to 3005. And then our const route. So this is going to be the base route. Remember, this is going to be, we're going to call it API v1. So our base route here is going to be API v1. You could call it backend or whatever you want, whatever's logical for you. And there's our route. So here we say app.use to uh, call here our cookie parser. So we're going to bring that in open and close parentheses. We're also going to do app dot use and open and close parentheses. This will be cross origin resource sharing. So cause open and close parentheses. And here the origin we're going to allow is going to be our root domain. So I'm not going to in my app, you might choose to allow all which in which case you would just, you know, you would use something like a star like that to allow all. But that opens your web application up to attacks, right? So I only want to allow requests that come from the actual domain themselves. And so that's how I'm going to set this up for extra security. And here credentials needs to be equal to true as follows. Excellent. All right. So that's set up and here. I want to say app dot use and then here body parser. And that's going to be dot JSON as follows. Now we want some kind of health check. So AWS can check the health state of our application. And this is how you can actually set up your routes and logic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say app dot get open and close parentheses here. And that's going to be route. And here I'm going to say plus. So that means API v1 so forward slash API v1, which is this route here. And that's going to be plus forward slash health or health check or whatever you want to call it. And this will check and return a response if it's healthy here. So here I'll say async and here we'll put in request and here response and let's here return as follows our result. So that will return a, res a response dot status and it has to be a status 200 because that means it's a healthy response dot JSON 
and then open parentheses. And here what I'm going to do is say message. And this is going to be healthy. Right. So this is going to be very useful for us because we can test if our express server is even working. If we get healthy returned, we know it's working. If we wanted to return an error, we could put something like 401 or something like that. But if this doesn't return a response, it means it's unhealthy. So it will return an error if it doesn't return anything. So we don't need to put in some kind of negative response here right now. Great. So down here, let's just test this is working and say app.listen like follows. And here we'll listen on the port that we set. And we'll say, OK, let's have this function, which will basically console.log backend server listening on on port. And here I'm just going to say whatever the port is. All right. So we know it's working. Great. So let's go and format that to all look neat and tidy. And let's go as follows and go TS dash node for TypeScript node. And that'll be server dot TS. Let's go and try and run that. And it's showing that there's some kind of error here with our request and response on health. So what I could do up here is I could say import type. And this could be something like request response from express like follows. Let's see if that here fixes the issue that we have appearing here. So that one is going to be type request. And this one here is going to be of type response. It could have just used any to get it working. But let's see if that fixes the problem. And here it's also finding an error with cookie parser. So let's see what's happening there. So here we need to save the dependencies for the type for cookie parser. So here we'll go yarn add as follows. And probably we're going to have the same issues here as well, maybe for body parser. No, that looks okay right now. So let's go and try running this again. Same issue here for cause. Yep. So here I want to do yarn add here types for cause. And I could have put as dash D for dev, which is probably what I should have done. But that's fine. Let's check this here. And there you go. So our TypeScript node server dot TypeScript is running. It's listening here on port 3005. How do we check that? Well, let's go here to port 3005. So localhost, this is port 3005. And it's saying cannot get. Well, the reason is because we don't have a route for forward slash. There's nothing to return on forward slash. But if I go here, API underscore v1 forward slash health, which is basically the directory that we set up over here, right? API v1 forward slash health, it should return something. Let's go and check that. And there we go. We've got our response message healthy, meaning our server is running, we can send requests to it, it can then do all sorts of logic here, whatever it is updating a database, creating a user doing a Stripe payment, whatever it is, we can create these different routes. Now we know it's working. Congratulations. But let's go and actually check it with nginx. So if I go here to our proxy, and let's just go and do our Docker build. If you haven't already um, done this on the last video, make sure you go and check the last video out so you know how to build this with Docker. But here we're going to go Docker build T proxy. We've already done this, so technically we don't have to build it again, but I just want to do it for completeness. And let's go Docker run on port 80. And let's map that to port 80. And let's run proxy, right? So now we're going to run our Nginx. So Nginx is now running here. And on our front end, our front end is running over here, just so if it's not remember to do npm run deploy, because we want this now to run on port 3000. We're not developing on it. If we're developing there, we'd have it run on port 5173. And our back end, we want to here go ts node server dot ts. And another thing I could do is I could just copy that and go to something like my package dot json and underneath here license, I could just put scripts. Right. So let's just make this easier for ourselves. And let's put in a script here. That's going to allow us to just do npm run start because that makes a lot more sense. And that's then going to run our ts node server dot ts as follows. So now if I just go yarn start, that comes up with an issue It says cannot find module TypeScript. So let's just go, I don't know, yarn add TypeScript. And here we go. Let's do this again, yarn start. And there you go. Backend server listening on port 3005. So that's running.
the front end's running and our proxy's running. Now check this out, right? So if we go over here to our local host, so here's our website. But if I go up here and I say forward slash API underscore V1 forward slash health, check what happens. It routes to the back end server. So what this means is within our front end application, we can now, for example, I could go into any folder or component I want to here, any file I want to. And for example, do an Axios request, right? So axios.get or do a fetch request to API v1. And that will route a request to our backend server without having to do a ton of work for cross origin resource sharing, etc. And we now have the ability to go and set up any server here that we want running anything we want and route requests to it. So I really think taking the time to set up Nginx was well worth it. Now what we need to do for our express server is actually build out on it, just some of the logic to handle dealing with cookies, so that when a user actually goes and logs in. So for example, a user here on our local host, they go and they log in, what we need them to be able to do is store those cookies on the server so that the server can use those cookies for making requests, right? We, we need to protect not only our routes, but we also need to protect our server. So we're going to set that up so that this functionality is all working here. And then what we can finally do is protect our route, right? We can have the checks run that need to run. We can even have it check it in Nginx itself that that user should be able to access that page, etc. So I hope you're enjoying it. And remember, if it's feeling like a bit much, you want to delay your project, just shut up and code.